back. Yeah, it's time to activate whatever this thing is. So did I ever scan these? I did, okay. Scan some plants. Helium. Quarantine. Atmosphere is rife with mineralis, a sentient gaseous global exterminator virus. Holy crap. Friendly place. Zebus. Planet's crust is primarily urethic ore, making it ideal for subterranean construction. A class. What would that be? 29? <laughs> Planet. Zebus is inhospitable to most bioforms. This world was considered unremarkable until it became a base for space power forces. Planet or mine, too. Uninhabitable wasteland, savaged by nuclear dust storms and constant seismic upheavals. Zebus. Talon 4. Ecosystem studies indicate that Talon 4 was a biological paradise prior to the impact of an extraterrestrial object. What remains of the biosphere is slowly fading due to exposure to phase on radiation. At current rate of decay, Talon 4 will be a barren class 13 wasteland in approximately 25 years. There's one. Twin tabula. Profile planet is best known for twin fever, a disease caused by a viral strain native to twin tabula. In the early stages of the disease, the victims suffer from double vision. When the twin sight fades, the victim is near death. Jeez. All the planets in this region suck. <laughs> I think that's all of them. I oh, know, there's one. No, it's a billion. Oh, it just didn't have the thing around it. So, yeah. This particular galaxy has awful planets. Also, Zebus no longer exists. It uh, kind of exploded. In this part of the timeline. <laughs> They're gonna have to update that. <laughs> and so in here... ...is a less safe point. All the technicians report to main observatory. Maintenance required on both hollow modules. I think we just fixed that for you. <laughs> so, uh... I'll expect my pay in the mail, pirates. This is the best power-up. The best offensive power-up next to the plasma beam. Super missile. This powerful attack uses five missiles. Using the power beam, hold A to charge or press Y to fire. 
It just combines your charge beam with missiles. And I wasn't kidding about uh, the damage. It's insanely powerful. Eats through your missiles, though. Oh, hey guys. So far, this place hasn't been too bad, but now we're getting to the to the reason I don't like this area. This battle up here is not fun. Oh, they're on the land first, that's right. Can't even see my radar. Actually, you know what? Let's make use of these. Actually, you know what? No. I'll wait until the flying ones spawn. They're actually dangerous enough to warrant using super missiles. Hi. These guys. I hate these guys. That's right, I already scanned them. I have to look down just to see my radar. So yeah, super missiles are awesome. <laughs> I think one shot everything. Get my stuff back. If any of these boxes will be nice. There we go. Ah. Uh, thank you. We need to shoot that, but we need the plasma beam to get to the ice, so we'll be dealing with that anytime soon. This is the tower that uh, that Chozo Artifact is in. It's in that thing. But, can't do anything about that right now. Here's the reason I never liked this place. The Metroid. Scan it quickly because it will break out and attack you. Energy based parasitic predator. The dominant species of planet SR 388. Metroids can suck the life force out of living things. A Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy, growing larger as it does. The only way to shake an attached Metroid is to enter Morph Ball mode and lay along. Super missiles deal with them quite easily. Also, I believe, yeah, the guy just jumps right through the window. Metroids here. 
Phase on infusion stage six, Metroid. <laughs> Phase on infused Metroids, oh goody. Initial transfer of Metroids to Talon 4 research facilities has been completed. Three were terminated in an incident at the landing, at the landing site, but the others were pacified and transported safely. Initial phase on infusion testing is underway. We are eager to observe the effects of phase on Metroids, especially their ability to absorb and process the energy given off by phase on sources. Our other research suggests a considerable growth in power and size. Whether the creatures stay stable thereafter remains to be seen. They can hear an item under us. Metroids are still weak to the cold. The ice beam renders them pretty much harmless. You just freeze them and missile them and they're dead. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, uh, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zebus, Command ordered a number of metagenic improvements for him. Though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes in a cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite successful in the end. Early tests indicate a drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Meta Ridley, will become the mainstay of our security force, a job he will certainly relish. Confidence is high regarding Phazon applications. We know enough about Phazon now to begin combining it with spacebar DNA. Ugh. The codename for this venture will be Project Helix. Preliminary studies indicate that Phazon infusion could produce radical pirate genomes. Benevolent mutation levels are... Ugh, I keep yawning. Phazon madness is a concern, but refinements in the infusion process should reduce, our, reduce or neutralize the odds of mental degenerate. Generation. All guards must use ice containment gear when transporting metro units. <laughs> Repel with missiles set to maximum concussion. Super missiles, probably. We do the trick there. Also, we scan this thing. This tank holds the remains of Experiments 7526. Conversion of Elite Pirate unsuccessful. Ugh, they should be a pirate. Oh crap, I let a Metroid out. <laughs> I'll just blow you up. Oh man, it survived. All my missiles on you. Thank you. Ooh, that's a knee tank. I'll take that. Tons of lore down here.
Titan is suspended indefinitely. Metroid dissection continues to provide more questions than answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's qu quadripartite nucleus, but the manner in which a Metroid actually extracts the life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid extracts energy. Identifying this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter, as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Studies of Metroid biology continue. Though with limited progress, it seems likely that we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means rather than trying to reproduce their powers. If they could be adequately tamed, we would have no need of a proper understanding of their me metabolism. A small force of disciplined Metroids could wipe out entire armies, and once we find a way to shield them from cold containment weapons, they'll be invincible. Furthermore, if we could, could then harvest the energy they consume, we would have a near limitless source of power at our disposal. Remove immediately. I don't know what this noise in the background is, but it's all sorts of obnoxious. Wasn't there a missile in here? Yeah, there it is. How do I get to that? Oh my goodness. What is that sound? I never noticed that without headphones. Scan this guy's yet? I have not. Burning insect with an ice reinforced carapace, averse to heat. This member of the beetle family is adapted to life in the sub zero temperatures of the Fenjinu region drifts, growing a thick ice shell over its entire body. The ice is extremely resilient, providing the ice beetle with extra protection and augmented digging abilities. And yeah, they uh, like to run away a lot. It does them any good, but they like to run away a lot. Oh goody, this room. Alright. We're almost out of here, so I'm gonna cut it again. <laughs>